Hey, what is going on guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at my second DC omnibus and that is the Batwoman omnibus. So without further ado, let's take a look at this book. Here is the cover of the book featuring Batwoman about to kick us right in the face, which would be really painful, but makes for a cool cover. Here is the spine of the book, which I think is simple, classy, it works, I like it. Here is the back of the book, which says, here there be monsters, and then it shows Batwoman going against one of those aforementioned monsters, so you know there's no false advertising here, folks. Alright, before I can start talking about how much I loved this omnibus, first, let's go over what it collects. So in here, we get Detective Comics number 854 through 863, the New 52 Batwoman number 0, and then Batwoman number 0 through 24, and then also Batwoman Annual number 1. Alright, and then another thing before I really start talking about how much I enjoyed this book, although this is part of the reason I enjoyed it too, but I want you, as I'm talking, to really pay attention to the artwork as I'm flipping through, because I think it is so phenomenal in this book. Frankly, I think this book has some of the best interiors that I've seen in a long, long time, and the use of the medium is so inventive too. I mean, some of the pages display the action in a super dynamic way that is super unique and just it is a comic book like you will not find these type of pages or this type of content displayed in this way anywhere else it is so uniquely a comic book with so much care and love put into it i loved that so much I always say that comic books are an interdisciplinary effort because there's so many different creatives coming in and making something special, and this book that really shines through. I think the two main artists that worked on it, because there are actually a few, were Travis McCarthy and Amy Reeder, who are two names I haven't heard of before. And then when it comes to the writing, uh, I believe that was J.H. Williams III with W. Hayden Blackman and also Greg Rucka, and Rucka is the only name I really recognize there, although I've not even read too many of his stories before. I also should mention that I think Williams did a lot of the artwork too, at least maybe the cover artwork. I wasn't too positive on who was doing those, but whoever it was did a phenomenal job. One, just like this comic, I kept flipping to pages and wanting to take a picture and send it to my girlfriend, but I'd already sent her like three, so I didn't want to just blow up her phone with every single page in the Batwoman omnibus, but really, it was just like such a spectacle to look at. It was wonderful. Now, putting that aside and getting to the nitty gritty, good art can only take you so far. Luckily, this book has phenomenal writing as well, and if you're wondering why I picked up the Batwoman omnibus of all the DC omnibuses as I kind of take my dive into the world of DC, for those who are unfamiliar with the channel, this is only my second DC omnibus. I'm kind of, you know, exploring the world of DC right now, just going in places that interest me, and the reason that I picked Batwoman was Pretty simple. You know, you used to go to a comic shop when you were little, and you didn't know any of the people you saw on the stands. You just go grab whatever comic looked cool, and that's kind of what I did here with Batwoman. And luckily, this was a super accessible read. I found it really friendly for a new reader like myself, who knows not even a lot of the Batman lore, and who knew nothing about Kate who is the Batwoman here. And it's funny because I thought that she was going to be related to Batman because, you know, being on the outside of the DC comic world, but still being in the comic world because I'm such a huge Marvel fan, I had kept hearing things about, like, the Bat family. And, like, I don't know, I just assumed everyone was kind of related. Um, or at least, like, via adoption. But Kate Kane is not related to Batman at all. She's this her own separate person who sort of, you know, had her own tough upbringing, which we learn about in the book, which again, I will add is really well done because when I first picked up this book and I started flipping through it and reading it, I immediately noticed the awesome artwork, the awesome action scenes, and just kind of the quippy, awesome dialogue and the detective thing kind of going on. That was all cool. That was good. If this entire omnibus had just been that, it would have been an enjoyable, serviceable comic book experience. But they did the extra mile and they went a little deeper with the character introspection and the characters in her life. Also, you know, are real characters. They feel like real people who she disappoints, who are proud of her at times, who she has complicated, nuanced relationships with and these are just mostly normal people some of them are on the police force some of them are like military etc etc but really they're not superheroes they're not 
capes, you know? So it's cool seeing characters like that. I feel like that is something we've kind of lost in a lot of modern comics, that we don't get to know too much about non-superhero people involvement in the life of people who do have powers, you know, especially, I mean, I read mostly X-Men, and the X-Men are, they kind of just hang out with each other, which is cool. They're all mutants, so I get it. But Every once in a while, it's nice to get a character from the outside so you can see their perspective and what it's like looking in. Super good. But yeah, I really enjoyed learning about Kate's past, you know, especially when she was younger and she lost her mother and she lost her sister. And there's a little bit more to the sister thing. It was her twin sister, but that's explored in this book and I'm sure elsewhere. And then she ends up joining the military, but she gets kicked out because of the don't ask, don't tell policy, which really sucks for her. But on the other hand, that's kind of nice because it sort of releases these shackles from her and she no longer has to hide that part of her. So while she may be hiding her secret identity she doesn't have to hide who she loves and how she loves and I kind of think that's beautiful in a way and you know it's kind of funny just thinking about it now all of her relationships romantic familial otherwise are so masterfully done in this book and they're so distinct each one of them it's just a great writing feat that they did here it makes Kate and everything that is at stake for her feel really real and it gets me more invested as a reader I mean I was sinking into this book. I went through this book so fast because I could not get enough. I think I read this in two, two and a half days maybe. So not only is she, in my opinion, the coolest designed Batman themed character, but she also has a lot of depth to her, which is really what I was looking for and I'm glad that we got it here. Plot wise, we do deal with a lot of monsters and mythology. Um, there's like La Llorona in here, there's Bloody Mary, and there's reasons for why those mythological Mythologized, that's not a word, mythologized beings exist in here. We also do get some more notable DC characters like Wonder Woman and Batwoman have a team up in here. And then Batman is in this omnibus a few times as well. And by the way, I'm relying on you guys for two things. One, to keep giving me DC omnibus or hardcover collected recommendations because I want to keep reading these stories because so far they've been really good. This and Animal Man have been really, really enjoyable for me. Um, but two, I'm also relying on you guys to kind of just fill me in on some things maybe that I'm missing because it seemed like there was a point in here where there is a greater plot that's going on in the DC universe, you know, kind of behind the scenes about Batman Incorporated or whatever, Batman Inc. So I wasn't too privy on, on what that was and it is expanded upon a little bit more in here, but I don't know if that's a much bigger thing, like if that is an entire event or a storyline in and of itself. But yeah, feel free to let me know because I, I'm curious. Guys, I've got nothing bad to say about this omnibus. I thought it was incredible. I highly, highly recommend it, especially if you're somebody who's new to DC and maybe wants to get into it. I think this is a good one to do that. I also, I hope that people really like this book because, like, it's funny. I don't have my finger on the pulse of, like, DC Comics as much as I do Marvel. So this run, like, everyone could hate it, maybe, and I wouldn't even know. But, hey, I really, really liked it. So that's all that matters to me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know what you think of the story if you've read it. And with that, have a great rest of your day, everybody. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. There's a 1,000 subscriber special announcement coming soon.